Good morning. Rise up in hope today. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to read Psalm 27, 13. It is one of my life scriptures that I pull out as often as I need it. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I'm going to read it again. Psalm 27, 13. Today's devotional is called Faith Arise Confidently Sure. Confidently Sure. One thing I know, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of my Lord in the land of the living. That means in my surroundings, in my situation, in everything that concerns me. I will see the goodness of my Lord. Wait for the Lord, verse 14 says. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Again, putting on Ephesians 6, the full armor of God today, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, which extinguishes every flaming arrow, the belt of truth, the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I can plow through this day with confidence, confidence, certainty, being assured of something. I am still confident of this. The still there reminds me that it's not going to be easy. I'm going to have war. I'm going to have opposition. I'm going to have adversity. But if I know that I am still confident that I will see the goodness, I won't maybe see it. I will. I shall. These are absolutes. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Are we waiting well? That's our first question for today. How are you doing in the wait? Yesterday we talked about what to do in the wait. And, you know, sometimes it just takes time. Sometimes it takes time and God is watching our attitude during the wait. During the wait and it is extremely important how we do the wait, whether or not he answers us quickly, whether or not he answers us delay after delay after delay. If my attitude is the blocker, man, God, get me in order with you because I don't want my attitude to be a blessing blocker. A blessing blocker is something that blocks your blessing. So I'm still confident. I'm still confident. I'm still confident. I don't live in the clouds. I have the word of God that I'm still confident of. I will see the goodness of my God in the land of the living. I'm waiting for him. I'm strong and I'm taking heart and I'm waiting for the Lord. And waiting doesn't mean it's not inactive. I will wait is action. That means I'm not moving out until God gives me my steps. But as soon as I hear those steps, I'm moving out. So faith arise, confidently sure. That's the morning's devotional. And I want us to go to Hebrews. We're going to go to Hebrews. And I'm going to read beginning in, let me just see where it was. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to begin reading in 10 verse 19 and the subtitle I just want to share it with you it says the superiority the superiority of faith the superiority of faith moving from argument to instruction the author cites many examples of those who have demonstrated faith throughout history living by faith is far better than merely fulfilling rituals and rules this can challenge us to grow in faith and to live in obedience to God each day, each day. This is the day we have today to live, and we want to confidently put our faith and our trust in the one that holds our hand. So verse 19, Hebrews 10, verse 19, a call to persevere. This is the word of the Lord today, a call to persevere. Therefore, brothers, 
since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have great, a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with sincere heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. He is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And now I want us to move just a little bit further on to Hebrews 11, 1. By faith, I want to just read what faith is now. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now, faith is being sure of, having confidence in what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. The study application says two words describe faith, sure and certain. These two qualities need a secure beginning and an end point. The beginning point of faith is believing in God's character. He is who he says he is. He is who he says he is, friends. The end point is believing in God's promises. He will do what he says. When we believe that God will fulfill his promise, even though we don't see those promises materializing yet, yet is the bold print here, Y-E-T, yet we demonstrate true faith. That applies in all of our lives. At this moment, in whatever situations we're going through, we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith is being sure of the things that we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So remember, we've talked about over and over again, looking through God's lens. I want us now to go to the book of Joshua because we have been in the book of Joshua. And I find it very interesting yet not a coincidence at all that God would have us in chapter 7 today. Joshua chapter 7, it is the chapter on Achan's sin. And in this particular passage of scripture, God is very much who he says he is, and he will do what he says he does. God hates liars. He hates stealers. He hates fraud of any kind. And he sees it. He sees it. He sees every injustice. So he will have his way, but it is his way in his time. And we trust him in this. Look what happens here. Chapter seven, verse one, but the Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth, to the east of Bethel, and told them, go up and spy out the nation region. So the men went up and spied out I. When they returned to Joshua, they said, not all the people will have to go up against I. Send two or 3,000 men to take it and do not weary all the people for only a few men are there. So about 3,000 men went up, but they were routed by the men of I, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gates as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same thing, sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Ah, oh, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring 
this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? Verse 9, the Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? Verse 10, the Lord said to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen and they have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been more liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. God sees and God will have vengeance. Yes, God burns with anger. Whenever he gives a command and we violate it, there is judgment. There are consequences. And you might say, well, how is this an encouragement? This is an encouragement because we want to walk and be aligned with the God of the heavens and the God of the earth. We want to position ourselves in agreement with him so that we are protected. We are protected through all that surrounds us. And when we do that, God is faithful and he will protect he will protect. So here in verse 13, it says, go consecrate the people. Tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, that which is devoted is among you, O Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove it. So if there's sin in your camp, you got to get rid of the sin. If there is sin in America, America has to get rid of the sin before God releases his blessing. So there are many things that come and pop out at me as I'm reading this passage. I, I encourage you to read it for yourself and see what God says to your spirit. One thing is absolute. God sees everything and he will not bless the liar, the stealer, the fraudulent. He will not bless it until it is removed. But he is very, very faithful in forgiveness. And he is very, very faithful to point out who's got the sin in the camp. So Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you that faith would arise and that we would be confidently sure that you are working all things together for our good. God, Oh, we come before you and we plead the blood of Jesus and we ask you to forgive the sin in the camp of every land, the sin in the camp of every family. God, open up our eyes, take the veil off, remove the mask so that we can truly see where the error is so that we might gain the victory. Because clearly in Joshua, you gave them every enemy if they did what you said and they walked in obedience, but the minute they stepped out of line and you knew because you know everything, you gave access to the enemy winning. God, how does this apply to us today in 2020, right now? We ask you, Father, for wisdom. We ask you, God, for discernment. We ask you, God, that you would speak to us both, both privately and publicly and corporately to gain the victory. God, you're so good. Thank you, God, that you are the great leader. You are the leader of all leaders. And, and I put my allegiance in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day, friends. See you tomorrow.